Hello everyone, I am Sir Heron Bautista and in this video let me discuss to you the topic all about the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation of a discrete probability distribution. I am hoping that you would lend your eyes and ears as I discuss things in this video. So, let's begin. Let's start with computing the mean of a discrete probability distribution. We have here the given values for the variables x and y, as you can see on the screen. All we need to do is to evaluate the following summations from 1 to 5. So first, we have here summation of x. By the way, how do we get the summation? Summation is just getting the sum of the values of the variables indicated. So here, we have summation of x, meaning to say, we're going to add the values for the x variables on the given data. We have 4 plus 2 plus 5 plus 1 equals 12. So this is now the value for the summation of x. Next, summation of y. Same process as what we did on the first example. So we're going to add all the values of y. That is 2 plus 1 plus 0 plus 2 equals 5. Next, summation of x, y. So since the two variables are being combined, all we need to do is to multiply. So we have to get the value of summation of x multiplied to the summation of y. So we have here 12 times 5, that is equal to 60. Next, summation of x plus y. So therefore, we must add the values of the summation of x and summation of y. In 1 and 2, we already get their summation. So all we need to do is to add. So 12 plus 5, that is equal to 17. Lastly, we have your summation of 4xy. So all we need to do is to multiply the value of the summation of xy to 4. That is 12 times 5 equals 60 times 4, that is 240. Okay? I hope you get the process on how to get the summation. Let's proceed. We have here the scores of 40 students in the test as shown in the table. Our task here is to compute the main score, but how are we going to do that given this data? We have the score in the first column, the number of students on the second column. So, let me show you how. First thing to do is to multiply the score to the number of students who got that score. So, we have 42 times 8, that is 336. 50 times 12, that is 600. 53 times 9, that is 477. 38 times 7, that is 266, and lastly, 46 times 4, that is 184. Next step is to add these values for us to come up with the total row score of the students in the set test. Upon adding, we have 1,863, and this value will be used to compute for the mean score, but how? So, we're going to have to divide this to the total number of students, so that is 1,863 divided by 40, our mean score is none other than 46.575 or 47. So, have you followed all the steps I did? I hope you do. Now, let's talk about the mean of discrete random variable. It is also called the expected value or the population mean. Take note of this. It is the population mean. So this, the mean of this random variable x, denoted by E of x, or simply this Greek letter, by the way, this Greek letter is read as mu. It is just a weighted average of the possible values of random variable x. So our formula for the mean of this variable is E of x, or this Greek letter, equals the summation of x times p of x, we're in, Capital letter X is just the outcome of the, or the value of the random variable, and the P of X is just the probability of the said outcome X or random variable X. And the Greek letter mu, read as mu, is just the mean of the probability distribution. Now, let's proceed to the steps. So, here are the steps. Step number one, construct the probability distribution for the random variable x as what we did on our previous topic. Second, multiply the value of the random variable x by the corresponding probability. And lastly, we are going to add the results obtained in step number two. So, we have here illustrative example number one. 
It talks about the number of spots. Consider rolling a die. What is the average number of spots that would appear? So let's have the step number one. Construct the probability distribution. So here is the probability distribution. On the first column, we have the values of the random variable, x, and we have the probability on the second column. Next, step number two. We are going to multiply the value of the random variable x to its corresponding probability. So, all we need to do is to multiply. So, 1 times 1 over 6, that is 1 over 6. By the way, in multiplying whole numbers to fractions, all we need to do is simply multiply the whole number to the numerator and copy the denominator. Next, 2 times 1 over 6. So, 2 times 1, that is 2, copy the denominator 6. So, as you can see, I haven't simplified it yet to its lowest term since it will be useful in our next step. Next, 3 times 1 over 6, we have 3 over 6. Then 4 times 1 over 6, that is 4 over 6. 5 times 1 over 6, 5 times 1 is 5, copy 6 as a denominator. Then 6 times 1 over 6, we have your 6 over 6. Okay, we're done with step number 2. Next is step number 3. All we need to do is to add the results. So, as you can see, the values here are all fractions containing the same value of their denominators. These are similar fractions. So in adding similar fractions, just simply add the numerators and copy the denominator. So 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, 10 plus 5 is 15, and 15 times plus 6 is 21. Copy the denominator 6. So the label would be the summation of x times p of x, so that is 21, all over 6, or 3.5. So this one, the symbol for the mean is this Greek letter read as mu. So this is now the mean. So how are we going to interpret this value? Therefore, 3.5 is the average number of spots appeared out of rolling a die. So this would be our interpretation. So I hope you follow the steps we did. Next. Example number two, the probabilities that a customer will buy one, two, three, four or five items in a grocery store are three over ten, one over ten, one over ten, two over ten, and three over ten respectively. The question is, what is the average number of items that a customer will buy? So doing the same process as to our previous example, we have here a table. So here is the probability distribution table of our second example. So the second step is to multiply the variable x to its corresponding probability. So we have 1 times 3 over 10, that is 3 over 10. So how we do that? We simply multiply the, num the whole number to the numerator and copy the denominator. Next, 2 times 1 over 10, we have 2 over 10. 3 times 1 over 10, we have 3 over 10. 4 times 2 over 10, we have 8 over 10. Then 5 times 3 over 10, we have 15 over 10. Since the values here are all similar fractions, we add them, we just add their numerator. So 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 plus 8 is 16, and 16 plus 15 is 31, all over 10. So this is the formula, that is the summation. Then the answer is 31 over 10 or 3.1. So the symbol for this is the Greek letter mu representing the population mean. So how are we going to interpret this value? Therefore, 3.1 is the average number of items that a customer will buy. So that's it. Now, I want you to try this example on your own. This will serve as your activity within this week, okay? So next, let's proceed to computing the variance and standard deviation of a discrete probability distribution. Now, let's talk about the symbols used in a statistics. We have here the sigma. It is the eighth letter, the uppercase of the Greek alphabet, used to denote the summation of. Next, we have this, it is a lowercase sigma used to denote standard deviation of a population. Next, but not least, mu. 
This symbol is the 12th letter of the Greek alphabet. This is the spelling, but it is pronounced as mu. It is used to denote the mean of a population. So please take note of these three symbols. Okay, next. Let's have the variance. So what is a variance? So the variance describes the amount of spread, dispersion, or variability of the items in a distribution. So gaano nga ba kakalat ang data sa distribution mo? Okay? So it is it indicates whether the values of x, the random variable, are clustered about the mean or widely scattered from the mean. Ito ba ay nakatumpok malapit sa mean or the average or ito ba ay nakakalat malayo sa mean or the average? Next, the larger the values of the variance, the further are the values of x from the mean. Kapag malaki ang value nito, mataas ang value niya, ibig sabihin, malayo ang mga random variables, value ng random variable x, doon sa pinaka-mean or pinaka-average. Okay, so the formula to be used here are, the first one is this. So this is sigma squared, denoting the variance. That's the summation of squared of x minus mean times the probability of x. So aside from this, we also have this what we call alternative formula. So that is, sigma squared is equal to the summation of x squared times p of x minus the mean squared. Okay, so let's talk about the next uh, one aside from variance. So we have standard deviation. So standard deviation obtained by getting the square root of the variance. Meaning to say, standard deviation class is the average. It talks about or it dictates the average distance of each variable to the mean or from the mean. So here are its formula. It is just the square root of the formula of the variance a while ago. We just added here the radical sign and we erase the square root 2 on the sigma lowercase. Okay, next. So here are the steps in finding the variance and standard deviation. First is to find the mean of the probability distribution. Second, subtract the mean from each value of the random variable x. Square the results obtained in step number 2. Multiply the results obtained in step number 3 by the corresponding probability. Then, get the sum of the results obtained in step number 4. So to illustrate, let's have this example. Example number one, the number of cars sold per day at a local car dealership along with its corresponding probabilities is shown in the succeeding table. Compute the variance and the standard deviation of the probability distribution. So ito na yung ating probability distribution table. So nilagay ko na lahat ng columns. Okay, on the third column is x times p of x. It is used to compute for the population mean. So, all we need to do is to multiply 0, 0 times 0.10, that is 0, 1 times 0.20 is 0.20, 2 times 0.30 is 0.60, 3 times 0.20 is 0.60, 4 times 0.20 is 0.80. Then, we add them up. That is equal to 2.2. This is now our population mean. Next column, we have x minus the mean. That is x minus the value of the mean, which is 2.2. So, 0 minus 2.2, that is negative 2.2. 1, minus 2.2, negative 1.2. 2, minus 2.2, that is negative 0 0.2. 3, minus 2.2, that is 0 0.8. And lastly, 4, minus 2.2, that is 1.8. Lastly, the next step is to square this value. So, so how are we going to do that? Using your calculators, press negative 2.2. Then press Y raised to X or the upper carrot. Then press 2 and press equal sign. Upon pressing equal sign, the result would be 4.84. On the second one, the square of negative 1.2 is 1.44. Negative 0.2 squared, that is equal to 0 0.04. And 0 0.8 times raised to 2, that is 1.44. And 1.8 squared, that is 3.24. On the last column... All we need to do is to multiply the values here to its corresponding probability on the left side of the table. So 4.84 times 0.10, that is equal to 0.484. 1.44, this one, multiplied to 0.20, that is equal to 2 point, 0.288. 
Then 0 0.04 times 0 0.30, that is 0 0.012. 1.44 times 0.20, that is 0.288. And 3.24 times 0.20, that is 0 0.648. And then, we sum it up. So, upon adding, we will came up with 1.56. This value is now what we call the variance. The variance of the probability distribution. So, Using this value, so that is now the variance, in symbol that is sigma squared equals 1.56. Using this value, we can solve for the value of the standard deviation by simply getting its square root. So that is sigma equals to the square root of 1.56. And this is the result. Then we round it, rounded it off. So that is equal to 1.25. So, this is now the value of the variance and the standard deviation of the probability distributions that we have in the example. Okay, so I hope you follow all the steps. You learn something from it. Okay? So, now, how about we use the alternative formula? So, let's see how it works. Okay, using the alternative formula, this will be the table. This is the probability distribution table, the first two columns. And then we uh, just added two columns. So first, we are just going to get the population mean by multiplying x to its corresponding probability. That is 0, 0.20, 0.60, 0.60, 0 0.80. Then add them up. That is equal to 2.2. And then we squared the value of x and then multiply it to the probability. So 0 squared times 0.10, that is 0. 1 squared times 0.20 equals 0.20. 2 squared times 0.30 equals 1.20. Then 3 squared times 0.20, this 1, equals 1.80. And then 4 squared times 0.20 equals 3.2. And then we add these values. Upon adding, we came up with 6.4. So, is 6.4 the same? Of course not. Because we're not yet done. So here is the step. So in getting the value for the variance, this value, the summation of x squared times p of x, we need to do, we need to subtract that to the squared of the mean. So 6.4 minus 2.2 squared, that is 6.4 minus 4.84, that is equal to 1.56, which is the same with our previous one. Right? And when we get the square root of this, we came up to 1.25 as the standard deviation. So I hope you followed the steps. You get the concepts on how to solve for the variance and the standard deviation as well as the mean of a discrete probability distribution. So thank you for your time and I hope I helped something on your studies. Thank you so much.